The air is still tonight. Yes, the clouds are slow and heavy. There'll be a storm. Yvette hates a storm, don't you, my dear? When she was a little girl, if a storm passed over in the night, she'd come scurrying to my bed and hide under the covers until morning. You know, my dear Duke, my daughter is so engrossed in her book, it would seem I must keep both you men to myself this evening. Tomorrow, we shall breakfast at the Fournay's restaurant at Chateau. As you wish, Marquise. As for Yvette, I am content simply to sit and admire her. Such women were made to be admired. Women are made to be themselves. At last she speaks. <laughs> I'm not such women. I am Yvette Obardi. Well, Yvette Obardi, is it not natural that a woman's beauty be celebrated, adored? No. Why? Men pay homage to beauty through poetry and art, which are not natural at all. Well, I see nothing wrong with a little flattery, my dear. Ah. That's a tactic men use to make us forget exactly what it is we are submitting to. The burden of motherhood. But surely, mademoiselle, it's natural and normal for women and men to fall in love and make children. But for that, society demands marriage. An unnatural law coupling beasts. Why, mademoiselle, I agree. Marriage is not the end of desire. If it was, there would be no soirees. Don't you believe in marriage then, mademoiselle? Why, my dear Baron. As men propose marriage, that is a question for you and the Duke. As for me, you can keep virtue and slavery. I'll take vice and debauchery. At least they're honest. My dear, one would think you were sincere. But I am like you, Mama. Always sincere. I trust that you would not favour a man who was debauched, mademoiselle. All men are debauched. You are being outrageous and offensive, my girl. Not at all, Marquise. If that's what Yvette means by honesty, I'll do my best to be honest with her. <laughs> what are you reading, anyway? Another treatise on entomology? Judge for yourself. What is it men in women do require? The lineaments of gratified desire. What is it women do in men require? The lineaments of gratified desire. That's good. That's very good. That's scientific. No, these verses are religious. <laughs> well, darling... Before you utter another blasphemous word, you may take the Duke for a walk. It is a good time to enjoy the coolness of the evening under the trees. No, Mama. I shall not go walking just now, and you know very well why. But a turn around the garden will be of no concern, my dear, and it might lighten your mood. Very well. Come, Sevigny. I'm at your disposal, mademoiselle. Are you truly my friend, Jean? Well, of course. But truly, truly now? Absolutely your friend, body and soul. Enough of a friend not to lie to me. Once, just once. Even twice if necessary. Even enough to tell me the absolute exact truth. Yes, mademoiselle, honestly. Well, what do you think, deep down, about the prince? The devil. You see, you're already preparing to lie. Not at all. I'm searching for the words, the proper words. Heavens, Prince Kravilov is a Russian who was born in Russia and who speaks Russian and about whom there is nothing false but his name and his title. Scratch a Russian and you find a Tartar. You mean that he is... A con man, mademoiselle. A Russian one. And you? Ah. Well... I'm what they call a butterfly, an ephemeral insect. What do you mean? Tell me simply and truly. I mean that I'm a man from a good family, who had intelligence and who squandered it in wise cracks, who had good health and who's injured it through debauchery and a little vice, who had some worth, perhaps, and who scattered it by indolence. I have a certain knowledge of life, a complete absence of prejudice, a large contempt for mankind, including women, and a very deep sense of being useless. Your self-portrait isn't flattering. No, but at times I can be frank, and I'm even capable of affection, mademoiselle, as you could see if you gave me the chance. With these defects and qualities, mademoiselle, I offer myself to you to do with me what you will. And what do you think of my mother? Don't ask for my opinions on women. Well, then you must have a bad opinion of them all. 
Come, think. Won't you make a single exception? The present company is always accepted. Well, what do you think of me, then? Look, we'll get drenched. Tell me! You want me to tell you? All right. I think that you're an intelligent person. Sensible and practical. Who knows very well how to amuse herself and others. How to entertain and entice. How to hide her views. How to lay her traps and who waits patiently to catch her prey. Is that all? That's all. I shall make you change that opinion of me, Jean. I'm going to bed. The storm is making me ill. My daughter has gone to bed. And I'm going to do the same, Marquise, if you will permit me. You, I need you. Octavia. Oh, Leon. How I love you. How I love you. you needed me. Are you all right, my dear? Did you sleep? No, Mama, I didn't. Oh, the storm has upset my little girl. No, Mama, it wasn't that. I, I need to speak with you. I, I... <laughs> what is the matter? I... Uh, what in the world is the matter with you? Oh, oh Mama... Mama! Come, will you tell me what the matter is? Last night, I saw you in the garden with... with him. Well, what of it? Mother! Mother! I really believe that you are crazy. When this ends, will you let me know? I need to go to breakfast. No, I must speak with you. Listen, you must promise me. We will go away. Just the two of us, somewhere very far off, into the country. We must live as honest women together. No one must know what has become of us. Say you will, Mama. I beg you. I implore you. <laughs> will you? I don't understand you. <laughs> Last night, I saw you on, on your knees with, with him, so undignified. My mother! Look, darling. Are you now so low? You cannot, if you knew. We will go away. I will love you. I will love you so much that you'll forget. Listen, my girl, there are some things you don't yet understand. But don't you forget, don't you forget that I forbid you ever to speak to me about them. No. I am no longer a child. I know that we receive people, men, yes. clients, 
and I know because of that, people don't respect us. Well, you know a lot. I know more. Well, it must not be any longer. Do you understand? I don't want it. That is not to be my future. We will go away. What? Leave Paris? Yes. You don't mean it. I do. But you love Paris. We must go. Oh, don't be absurd. How would we live? We will sell your jewels, if need be. And we will work as honest women somewhere very far away. And if I can marry, so much the better. You really are crazy. If you don't mind, you will rise and come down to breakfast with all the rest. We are waiting to go to the restaurant. No. There's someone I shall never see again. Do you hear? I want him to leave, or I shall leave. You shall choose between him and me. You are crazy. No. That man shall leave the house, or I shall go myself. Oh. That's it. And where will you go? What will you do? I don't know. It doesn't matter. I want to be an honest woman, free, free, free to, to follow my passions, to, to find my soul's desires, to, to imagine something else. After all your jibes about vice and debauchery, your trouble is you're pure, pure, and you expect the world to be the same. Well, it isn't. It's pure, all things are pure. Oh, shut up! I've had enough of your absurd tantrums. I am as good as anybody else, do you understand? Yes, I lead a certain life, it's true, and I am proud of it. The honest women are not as good as I am. Oh, Mama, our house is a bordello, and you, you are a kept woman. And you say you still think of father. <laughs> well, I won't be like you, a courtesan, a whore. Don't you talk to me like that, don't you ever. Ever! I have always protected you. I've cared for you, given you the best of everything, and loved you more than you can know. Whatever I've done has been for you. Yes, I lead a certain life. What of it? Otherwise you'd be a maid, as I once was, earning 30 sous a day. You'd be washing dishes and your mistress would send you to the market, and she'd turn you out if you slackened. And the master would abuse you and molest you and turn you out if you said a word. And here you are now, a lady of refinement and culture, able to take your leisure and be waiting on hand and foot and have your every whim catered for because I am a... Because I lead this life. And you're only a nursemaid. A poor girl with 50 francs to your name. You must learn how to manage if you don't want to starve to death. Oh, and the work so quickly leaves its marks on a girl's body. Beauty soon loses its bloom without money. There aren't two ways for us, do you understand? There aren't two ways when we are servants. But don't you see? You're still a servant, still bought and sold, but for a higher rate. No, I was a servant, now I have servants and so do you. Look, we can't make our fortune with official positions, fiddling the books, crimes and corruptions, swindles and stock market frauds. We have only one way, only one way, so much the worse. A pretty girl must live or suffer. She has no other option. They are so demure and proper, your honest women. They have money to live on. Their whims are pandered to. And they are vicious for amusement and vindictive by choice. They are worse, worse because they have got no excuse. They are the bad ones, really. My poor girl. My poor girl. If you knew how you were hurting me. 
come now, it is unavoidable. We must take life as we find it. We have no other option. Now, come downstairs so that no one will notice anything. No. You heard what I said. I shan't change my mind. I never want to see them again. Never, never. You are young and you don't understand how selfish you are being. Selfish? Yes, selfish. My passions, my soul's desires, while well, I have passions too. I have found love after so long. Love? Yes, love. And that is precious to me. At my age, you you will come to realise if you do not turn your back on companionship. Oh, come now. Think. Be reasonable. If they come back, you'll see no more of me. You refuse to come down? You better rest this morning. Shall I send something up? I'm not hungry. I don't want to be disturbed. I'll come up and see you this afternoon. Myself alone. My name is Yvette Barda. My name is Yvette Barda. Who is it? It's me, darling. I've come to see how you are. Have they gone? Yes, my dear, they have left for the train. Come in. Well, are you better? Won't you eat an egg? No, thanks. Nothing at all. Are you going to get up? Yes. Soon. Good. I'm glad. Listen, I've, I've thought a great deal about things, and this... This is what I've decided. The past is in the past. Let's speak no more about it, but... The future will be different. Or I know what's left for me to do. Let's talk no more about it. Very well. Will you take a walk with me before dinner? Yes, Mama. people looking all over for you. Clemence even went down to the river to see if you were there. Don't fret, Mama. I was walking. But why didn't you let someone know? And where have you been till this time? You're late for breakfast. Uh, I went into Bougival. I had a toothache and stopped in at the druggist. They gave me some drops. I, I kept on walking to Chaton. By the time I reached Rural, the pain was gone. Why didn't you tell me? I could have given you something. I didn't want to wake you. 
It was too early. Well, are you well enough for some breakfast now? Yes, Mama. Uh, I feel much better. I'm hungry after my walk. I'm pleased, my dear. But I, I just need to go to my room first. Very well. I'll tell Clemence to leave the table set. Thank you. By the way... Yes, Mama? Our friends are coming to spend next Sunday with us. I've invited the Chevalier too. from the horse's end, forced us to take more rides. Ah, we flew around. All round and round. All round and round. Afterwards, I could hardly stand. You would never make the cavalry. <laughs> and then the crowd went wild, jeering and shouting. <laughs> they must have thought we were drunk. <laughs> How could they? And then we had to stagger amongst the stalls winning stupid toys. Uh, oh. We are her stupid toys, my friend. True, I like to play. And I remind you that you are still at my command. Now, you must answer my questions and do as I say. <laughs> Reporting for duty, mademoiselle. President direct, mademoiselle Yvette. Chevalier, do you love me? Yes, mademoiselle. I have done from the very first moment I saw you. Mm, Duke? Oh, you know I worship you. You are my goddess. Ah, Duke. In a man's eyes, a woman can turn from a goddess to a whore in an instant. Oh, Mademoiselle, not if he's truly in love, as I love you. And as I love you also. Truly? Yes, truly. But which of you loves me the most? What shall you do to prove your bravery in love? I think a gallant soldier would kiss my hand. Oh, <laughs> an honour, Mademoiselle. My pleasure. And now, kiss my foot. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Now, let the one who truly loves me fetch me this stick in his mouth. Who will win? Mademoiselle Vetter, be reasonable. What's the matter, Chevalier? Don't you want to compete for me? Your love, your prize? Or would you rather that you both shared me at the same time? Is that what you want? Would you like that? 
by himself. You would embarrass yourself. You're the one who's embarrassed here, Doc. As for me, I don't care much about it. Tomorrow it won't happen. So much the worse for you. You'll have lost your chance. Well, is no one capable of doing what I desire? I will. Deserves a good bone. Alley up. <laughs> Alley. 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 <laughs> you appear to have had enough of the games. As I have. That's what you call having a good time, isn't it? You've had one ride, and now you want another. You came for that. I'm just giving you your money's worth. You're mad. I'd rather have Paris than your Paris mood. Excuse me, mademoiselle. I must find the Marquise and the Baron to say goodbye. You too then, Chevalier. You don't know what you unleash, mademoiselle. <laughs> What's the matter? It's none of your business. Leave me alone. Come on, mademoiselle. What's the matter? How have we annoyed you? Won't you be still? I don't understand this. I don't understand any of this. Why do you behave like that if all that it does is upset you? Look, let me take you into the house so that the servants don't see you like this. What am I? Nothing. My dear mother, forgive me.
Let's, I saw the candle from your window with Jean. Are you awake? Mademoiselle Yvette, I came back because I needed to see you. Mademoiselle, can you hear me? Have you nothing to say to me? As I stood on the station platform, I grew uneasy. I had to see you again. So here I am. I came to say I'm sorry for the way we parted. Forgive me. Let us be friends, please. Surely you can hear me. Yvette, talk to me. Answer if you can, please. Yvette. Yvette, if you don't want me here, then please at least tell me to go. Then I'll know that you're all right. Mademoiselle, can you speak? Please answer. Mademoiselle, I must know that you're all right. Open the door, please. And then I will. Wake up. Wake up. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. It's me. Jean, your mascot. I'm... I'm here. I love you. I love you, Yvette. Yvette. Oh, Yvette. I'm so glad you came to find us, Chevalier. I'm only sorry that it took so long. I should have known that you would be at the restaurant. But it is certainly too late for you to return to Paris tonight. Your room is ready, Chevalier. Oh, yes, please, Chevalier. You must stay. Oh, of course, I accept. Uh, my thanks, Marquis. <laughs> and my daughter might be in a better mood by tomorrow. <laughs> She's becoming so awkward. I really don't know what's come over her. But look... The candle is still burning in her room. She can't stay like that. If that foolish child should fall asleep, we must call to her. Put out the candle. Put out your candle, ma Mademoiselle Yvette. Mademoiselle, put out the candle. Ammonia! Ammonia, help! Emergency! That's Sylvigny. Help! Please help! Ammonia! Ammonia! In Yvette's room. Oh, my God! My daughter! My girl! My girl! You're not unconscious. Bring smelling salts fast. Come quickly. Please help! Help! She woke briefly. She's resting now. How is she? The doctor says she's breathing normally. The Chevalier is with her. I didn't realise he'd been a medical student. He knew exactly what to do. He says that asphyxiation from chloroform is rare, though not impossible. There was a story in the newspaper just a few days ago about a girl who killed herself using just this method. Perhaps that's where Yvette got the idea though she seems to have drunk the chloroform as well as inhaled it. No. 
I'm afraid so. She was serious in her attempt, as this note shows. She left a note? To her mother. She was desperate. She wanted to escape the life that she was being drawn into. But you found her in time. Fortunately. Yes, I, I came back. Indeed. When did you come back? It's just a question. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember exactly. Try to remember. Well, it's difficult. I was in a panic. I understand that you could have been in shock. Think. When did you find her? I suppose it was just before the shouts at the window. So you were with her for just a few moments? Yes. Just a few moments, that's it. Well, it seemed longer. I forced the door. I found her. I loosened her clothing, opened the window, checked her heart and her breathing, and then... And then I heard the shouts at the window and called out. Perhaps she'd only just done it. Unlikely. You see, the note is timed at nine o'clock, Sunday evening. Let me see that. The maid said that she heard some commotion at about 10 o'clock, but put it down to hijinks from the guests, which wouldn't be the first time, and tactfully ignored it. That would have been about half an hour before we got back. I didn't hear anything. We're alone. You can tell me. Tell me. I raised the alarm. I helped to save her life. I revived her. Revived? Or ravished? Ravished? Are you... I mean, you think... Oh, Savelle, no. Look, it's me, Jean, your friend. You know me. And you know that I could never... Never. I love her. I love her. But what is your connection with her? Suitor? No. Fiancé? No. Or an adventurer? Just one of the number. The, the first in line. Waiting. Waiting to be a passenger on the bus. She's my... My friend. I want her as a lover. That's not enough, Salvigny. You desire her for yourself, but with effect you must love her more than yourself. Well, you love her mother, you mean? You couldn't wait, could you? You just had to move in. The Marquise is not sentimental. <laughs> it suits you to believe that. You blame me for what's happened, but you're just as much to blame. How do you figure that out? Look at the note. What of it? It's to her mother. I'm nowhere. What? It's all about her mother. The mother you stole from her. Yvette played her hand, staked her life to get her mother back. And she won. I've lost the Marquise for good. As if you care. You'd never have married her. The big, strong man of the world. Colossus of Rhodes, Junior. But you, you would have turned her into her mother. A kept woman. I could have made Yvette happy. With me, she would have been free, free to live a life of pleasure. Oh, yes, for a time, perhaps. But you'd have left her in misery in the end. You inflicted the misery. Oh, really? Is that how he lives with himself? The seducer? The abuser? I wanted her, yes, you know that. But you don't know. You can never know how much. I waited and waited. And there she was before me. Body so close. The scent, her, her soft skin, her breath. And all around me, the strange odor of the drug. I was trembling. I could barely stand. And then I held her. She was unconscious! She seemed to stir in my arms. And then? I kissed her. I kissed her over. And over, I tried to get through to her, to reach her, and I felt her, touched her, wanted her, wanted to defile her, devour her, join her. But I couldn't. I couldn't do it to this. Something shook me. A conscience, a desire. A longing for what she'd always denied me. Herself, her soul, her very being. And suddenly I was terrified because that seemed far off and all I wanted was to bring her back. Then there was shouting. You're sure it wasn't the other way around? Oh, believe me or not, that's up to you. 
Well, even if I do, wouldn't you say we're both guilty? Oh, don't give me your remorse, you hypocrite! I was wrong! You have no conscience! It was a moment only of pure desire to, to merge, surrender, possess! You're insane. Yvette is out of danger. There may be some damage. Damage? Inside. But she's young and strong. She should recover. The doctor will return later. I'm going for a walk. To the island. Is there anything else we should do? Inform the gendarmerie. About Yvette? About Servigny. Oh, I see. Well, the doctor has found nothing. Really? Yes. Besides, I, I doubt the Marquise would wish it. With her reputation, even if there was evidence, what chance is there of prosecution? True. Such a scandal would destroy them both. I believe we got back in time. I want to believe we didn't have to. Come on, I bet you need a coffee. I know I do. Shela Bruna El Rocosuda I frapta la soda Ilia son tu U prevota moda O la diosa Darling, lie still, rest. Birds, I can hear birds. Yes, darling. The birds are singing. It's morning. Oh, light, daylight, my darling. Am I dreaming? You are awake. Here, with me. I was floating. Floating past fields of beautiful flowers. So many flowers. The country was filled with them. Yes, my dear. And then, I don't know how, I was sat on the bank of a river. Fishing. I was fishing. Something pulled on the line. I drew it in. John, you must rest. He came to me, a prince, kisses again and again. He touches me. I reach out to him. He isn't there. I'm here, my little girl. I'm slipping over the edge, falling into the river, down, down, floating away, and the water is coming over me. I can't breathe, I can't speak. I feel 
I have no limbs. No bones. I want to live. You are alive, my little girl. Am I in the convent? No. You are in your bedroom in the villa. Mama. My mama. I'm so happy. Listen. You know what I thought, my darling? I'll close the salon. I'll sell my jewels and we can go away. Away from Paris? We can travel around Europe. We could go to Italy. But Paris. Leave Paris. The river, the island, the Champs Elysees. Notre Dame. I, I could study here. You could study abroad. The Moulin Gallet. The Comédie Française. The Boulevard. Oh, I love only Paris. Paris. And its memories. We could go to the theatre together. Oh. But where is our place, my dear? We don't belong among all the respectable ones. Where father sits. In paradise. With the common people. We'll take our seats in paradise. I'll make you a paradise, you'll see. We can go to Rome. Yes, Mama. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. I obey. We'll take our finest things, our prettiest dresses, and you will be so beautiful and celebrated and adored. And you will be so happy to live and be happy to live. And your destiny will be more wonderful than mine could ever be. I promise you, Yvette. My Yvette.